What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode of Grey Man Operations. Today is the first part of a two-part video series where I answer the two most asked questions on my channel since I started doing this. What do you do in a lawful post-self-defense situation so you set yourself up for success legally? And also, how do you legally acquire a firearm in South Africa? Now, last weekend I spent... A lot of time with the guys at gunlicense.co.za out at Gunnery Arms and Ammunition in Somerset West. And we spoke about getting your first firearm, getting your second firearm. We're going to take you through step by step. We're going to answer exactly what you should do from the moment you decide to purchase a firearm to the day you go to the gun shop and pick up that firearm. Now, obviously, guys, this is for South Africa only, but for my international viewers, maybe just give it to watch. It might be interesting for you to see the differences in your laws versus our laws. The first part is going to be about the lawful purchasing of a firearm, of multiple firearms, and then of multiple firearms and a rifle. That's in this video. Also in this video, to my patrons, I'm going to be doing my usual weekly giveaway of a Nightcore NUP30 sling bag, as well as a MRE, this is from Arms and Outdoor, but also Dave Shear. So I'm going to be hooking a patron up with that in this video. That's at the end of the video. Then another patron is also going to get a Canic gift bag. I'm going to be giving that away to one of my patrons every single week in the month of September. Then at the month of October, I'm going to be giving away a, probably another red dot. People like the red dots. So if you want to become a patron, if you're watching on YouTube, it's the first link in the video description below. If you're watching on Facebook or Instagram, it is the first comment. If you are watching on Instagram, this video is about 30 minutes long and Instagram only allows me to have 15 minutes of footage. So at some point, you're going to have to head over to my bio if you want to continue watching and then just click the link in my bio. It'll take you to my YouTube channel and that's where the full length video will be. Okay, so we're going to do the giveaway at the end of the video. I'm going to switch now to my footage with Mark Mulder from gunlicense.co today. I'm going to leave everyone we speak to link down below in the video description on YouTube. So if you want to make contact with him, please do so. Guys, remember, Gunnery Arms and Ammunition is a gun shop. It's not a studio, so they we have to sacrifice some um, of the fancy lights and things like that. But we did the best we could, and I think, the, I think the video came out really really well so let's switch to mark and we'll switch back at the end so guys i'm here with mark from gunlicense.co.za mark thank you for taking the time to answer some of the questions i'm going to try to move the, move through this as as quickly as we can because i know these videos can get quite long and through and you guys just want the information so let's get started with mark um we're going to talk in this first segment about the licensing process of licensing a firearm i know a lot of people are a bit daunted by that process they've heard horror stories of people getting their licenses refused for ridiculous reasons or waiting three, four, five years to get it approved. In, in as comfortably as you can, can you explain how you would recommend someone goes about from start to finish in terms of uh, getting a firearm, licensing it and, and coming home that day or coming home on a particular day with their firearm licensed and ready to go? 100% Ryan. So as you've just said now, it can often seem like a massive mountain in front of you. You know, you don't know where to start. You don't know what the process is, you've heard from a neighbor's um, brother that was a recce back in the day or an ex-policeman that says it's impossible. And that's kind of you know where the journey ends for a lot of people. But I'm here to tell you today that it is very much possible and it's actually a, a whole bunch easier than, than, than what most people think. So to put it simply, firearm licensing is a three-step process. Step number one is proficiency, step number two is competency, and step number three is licensing the specific firearm that you have chosen. So competency is the first step. You will need to decide first of all what types of firearms you'd like to do the training for. There's um, five modules in total to choose from. The first is legal. This is the mandatory module. You can then choose between handgun, shotgun, rifle, and semi-auto. Um, you pick up your books from the shop, take them home, and um, there's a little open book test in each one of these. Um, it's, I don't wanna say it's too easy. Um, it's some really, really, really fantastic information. And it forces you to kind of go and have a look at the parts of the Farms Control Act that, um, you know, the juicy bits, the, the bits that really make a big difference, like when to use a firearm, why do we actually carry these things, um, how to store it correctly, you know, um, lawful, responsible use. So you fill these, these tests in, you let us know the second that you finished with that, 
you come through for a, a day's workshop, which comprises of a, um, of a closed book test, as well as a practical shoot here on our indoor shooting range. Um, we will then mark the tests and within, let's say, plus minus a week and a half, two weeks, you will have your certificates uh, ready. Those are your proficiency certificates. So that is the whole of step number one done and dusted. Step number two requires you to uh, complete an application which go, then goes into the police. This takes, sure, roughly two to three months at the moment. It's, a, it's, a, it's quite a bit quicker than it has been. There's no science behind the police at the moment. So, you know, it's, it's kind of like it, it, it goes up and down and up and down. At the moment, it's, it's going really well. But the best time to apply for this is literally today. Um, the, the longer you take to start the process, the longer you're mm -hmm. going to take to eventually get your license. So at the moment, it's about two to three months. Um, once that comes back from the police, it's time to select your firearm. Um, there are professional companies such as us that make the process really, really simple. We have a full money back guarantee on all of the uh, applications that uh, we prepare for our clients. Um, so you select the firearm, you get your application pack put together. This comprises of SAPS police forms, um, a couple of attachments, a character references and that type of stuff, uh, safe photos, proof of address, a couple others, um, detailed motivation. This is very, very important. Yeah. <laughs> And this is all a service you guys provide, correct? 100%. So from start to finish, everything in between, um, everything comes with money back guarantee as well. So um, we try and make it as simple as possible. Step number three is definitely the thickest pack. So this is now where your motivation and everything comes in. Um, we offer the service where we literally give you an envelope signed and sealed, ready to go to the police. Um, about another two to three month wait. And then eventually one day, as you'll know, yeah. you get this beautiful SMS that says that your license has been approved. And um, congratulations, you are now a legal firearm owner. So, so just one question after that, but guys, just for context, in this year, so it's 2023 now, I've used gunlicense.co.za for the renewal of my Glocks license and the new license of my Canic. And it's exactly like that. It's swift, it's easy. On the end user side, you do very little. You do, the, I think the only thing you really do is make trips to the police station and back. Sure. Um, but they really sort you out with everything you need to run. It was one of the first times, well, the only time ever I was at the police station and they said that I didn't have to provide them with as much information as I provided them when I took one of your packs. So, um, Mark, on, so we, we got the three-step process and you're looking at about, I would say, five months on the good side, seven or eight months on the bad side. What is something like that going to cost? Let's say, obviously, excluding the cost of the firearm. What does a service like that cost? Awesome. So pr let's, let's work on the assumption here just to make things simple that you're going to do everything through us. Um, the very first step is going to be your proficiency. So um, let's assume that you want to do handgun and legal. That's going to be 2150 that you pay when you collect your books. That is um, for the whole of step number one. So that includes the books, the tests, the range fee, the gun rental, the coffee on the day, the, the whole shebang, ammo, everything included, that is for your proficiency certificate in hand. So there, there's no hidden cost. There's no, you, you know, you rock up here on the day and you, you pay extra for range fee and pay extra for ammo. There's none of that. So let's work on the assumption of 2150 just for handgun. If you want to do additional modules, so let's say you would like to also do shotgun or manually operated rifle or self-loading rifle, um, there's going to be 1,550 per module thereafter which once again includes the books, the course, the range fee, the gun rental, the ammo, the whole shebang. Um, there is a, um, a combination book, which a lot of people kick themselves um, on class day when they check the guy next to them writing a combination book and they're like, we should have done it ourselves. But uh, that's uh, 5,500 and that is for all five modules. So that is legal, handgun, shotgun, wow. rifle and carbine. Um, you save yourself a bunch of money doing it that way and you also um, save yourself a lot of writing. Mm, a lot of writing. Imagine. So there's no duplications or anything like that. Um, and uh, yeah, that also puts you into a class of only four people. So we don't do massive classes on a proficiency level. We like the private school of firearm training. <laughs> we want to make sure that you are chilled. It's a nice, it's, it's like, a, I don't want to say zen environment, not quite yeah. a meditative space, but very close to it. You know, it's a safe space where you can ask questions, where you, you know, you can, you can feel comfortable to um, to really learn, you know, there's no Rambos on this on this level of training. There's no there's nobody trying to catch you up and trick you and make things difficult for you. We're here to make sure that you know exactly what is going on, and um, yeah, we we pride ourselves in that. 
but that is basically the costing of the first step. Mm. The second step is going to be competency. So this is now once you've um, come through the class, you've got your proficiency certificate, everything's groovy. Um, our cost for that service is 650 Rand. Uh, that includes your SAPS forms filled in. All of your um, attachments are correctly compiled. We'll also consult with our clients, that's free of charge. Um, if you have any questions or um, you know, how do you get a second competency or whatever, um, we consult with you free of charge. Um, we print everything for you, we compile everything in an envelope, we give it to you in your hand. Um, this is a service we actually offer to the entire country. So if you've done your proficiency training in Bloemfontein um, and you need someone to help you with step number two, um, we do everything via email and courier. So you take your application pack into the police. Uh, the police charge for competency is 86 Rand at the moment. And um, yeah, that's pretty much all that you're gonna pay for your, for your competency. Once your competency comes back, you've selected your firearm, which can be anything from 1,900 Rand for a second and 38 special all the way to we know. The sky's the limit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the licensing cost for that is 1,350 by us. Once again, that is a consultation. That is all of your police forms filled in. That is all of your attachments correctly um, gathered, compiled, um, professionally printed, and, uh, and bound. And, and obviously the motivation, which um, is incredibly important. So our motivations are usually between about 40 to 70 pages, and it details every single reason that you need uh, or, or, or that, that, uh, that, that you have to license that specific firearm. Um, so every single motivation is different. It's tailored for that specific individual, for that specific firearm. Um, we really take the time and we're proud of our work. So that's why we uh, are able to offer that money back guarantee on that. And um, yeah, that's uh, gonna be the cost on our side. Then when you hand that um, application pack into the police, they are now charging uh, 168 Rand. Um, they up it by one or two Rand every year lately. Um, and that's that. That's, that's, that's pretty much all the, all the costs that are involved. And then obviously ammo after the time. But I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so from my side on what you just said, look, one of the things I can be very truthful about is the thoroughness of their motivation. So all they asked me was, where do I live? Um, and do I have certain security features in place? And they compiled the motivation, including crime stats and everything for my particular area. So they are extremely thorough. And I think you guys like, have a 100% success rate, right? Um, at this moment in time, we do have a 100% success so, rate. Yeah. So you're in good hands. Another question a lot of people ask is, so you've got your first firearm, it's been two or three years, and you, you realize that if you were to ever use that firearm in a defensive shooting, there's the probability of it being confiscated. So you want that backup firearm. Um, Going through gunlicense.co today, what is the process of getting to a point where I am now to where I've, I've got my, I had my section, well, I still have my section 13 on the Glock and I have a section 15, which means I have a backup firearm that I can also EDC. 100% correct. So um, there are several ways that one can acquire a second handgun. The um, simplest, without having to jump through too many hoops and become a dedicated sports shooter and whatnot, is um, purely just to put it onto section 15, which is uh, for the primary use of occasional sport shooting. Um, you have uh, a 10 year license instead of a five year license, which is obviously a big benefit. Um, you have the same limit of 200 rounds per license. But um, as we all know, you are allowed to use any firearm for any lawful purpose, including carrying it lawfully on your person, provided that you have um, a valid license for it. It is completely concealed and it's in a holster. And should the uh, unfortunate event uh, arise where you need to defend yourself because of an unlawful criminal attack, um, you may certainly use that firearm. So in order to um, be issued with a Section 15 license, this is a bit of a gray area. You don't actually have to belong to a club, but there are many, many police stations that will give you lots of hassles if you rock up there the day and uh, you aren't uh, a member of a club. So we, we recommend all of our clients just join Natute, the NHSA, um, because uh, at a later stage, you can also do your dedicated sports status uh, through them, uh, which, is, which is a big win. So um, that, that Natute um, uh, sign up situation, it's, it's guys, it's like literally a day. You can do that whole thing in, in the matter of one day you can get signed up and then you can pull the trigger on, on the process, like you said, of getting that, that second license for that second firearm. So Mark, another question I get asked a lot is, you've got your pistol, this, and this is where I am now, so this is very important to me. You've got your pistol, you've got your backup pistol in case anything goes, with, goes wrong with your, 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 your section 13 or whatever the case may be, 
and now you want to transition to owning like something like a rifle or a shotgun, something uh, more serious for quote-unquote home defense, but especially guys living out in rural areas, living in farmlands and that sort of thing. You know, sometimes if you are being attacked by a group of guys who are well-armed, and we're talking eight or nine, you know, your standard 15 rounds in your pistol might not cut it. And also as a force multiplier, you might want something with a bit more range and a bit more punch. How does a civilian like myself go from, I've got my second pistol, to I'm not going to get, or, or I can now go and pick up my rifle at the gun store? Awesome, Ryan. So that's a very good question, and this is usually like where the, where the, where the rabbit hole deepens. Yeah. <laughs> and you go from only two guns to 20. Yes. But uh, we can help with that, by the way. But um, basically, um, it all depends on what these additional firearms are going to be. So the very first step, let's assume that you've you know, gotten into this gun thing, just you, know, you want to get your, your, your single handgun for self-defense, that's it. You then uh, listen to guys like Ryan, who's uh, going to tell you uh, all of the benefits of exactly what, 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 what he's doing now. Um, not just in terms of the gear that he uses, but also you know, how to acquire new firearms and whatnot, which I think was a very good move on your part. Um, but uh, let's say you want to get a pump action shotgun, for example. All you'll need to do is um, uh, complete the proficiency training for shotgun. You'll then need to apply for a further competency, choose your gun and license it. If you'd like to, for example, um, license one of these uh, semi-autos uh, that you see behind us over here, whether it be um, an AR-15, an AK, a semi-auto shotgun, doesn't really matter. The process is very, very similar. You'll need to do the required training. So let's assume you want to uh, get an AK, for example. You'll need to do self-loading rifle. A lot of the police stations will require you to do manually operated as well. And while you're at it, you might as well just do shotgun because yeah. it's all going to be done in the same time frame. But you'll um, complete the training, which is exactly the same um, type of uh, setup as when you first came to do your um, handgun proficiency, you get your books, you fill the tests in at home, you come to a workshop here with us, you get your proficiency certificate, we apply for a further competency, that process on your end is very, very similar, and um, there's different forms that we'll need to fill in for you, and it's a slightly different application, but um, that all happens behind the, behind the scenes. Um, once that competency comes back, you'll choose one of these, <laughs> and um, then the, the licensing process is very, very similar. You will also be required to obtain your dedicated sport status, mm. which once again you can do through the NHSA, the National Hunting and Shooting Association. It's an online test and a um, little target that uh, you need to shoot. It's a, very, uh, it's a very, very decent process. I think that it is, it's not too easy, it's not too difficult. I think that it's spot on. Um, it's, it's not unattainable. So it's, it's something that like, you know, an average Joe will be able to do. You learn a lot. And um, yeah, with your dedicated status, your proficiency and your competency, um, the application goes into the police and once again you receive that magic little SMS and you come pick up your AK. So, so from the end user perspective beyond, beyond the point of, of um, going and doing the dedicated status on the Natural website, mm. it's pretty much the same process. Very you much know, the if, same process. If they're process. dealing with you guys, it's going to be exactly the same as their first two firearms. Same deal. Literally I will leave so. Nat Shoot obviously linked down below. I recommend you sign up with those guys. It just makes life for people like myself so much easier where you don't actually have to go to a sports club and join and do actual sports shoots in order to get some kind of accreditation in order to buy a firearm that you're primarily going to be using for mm. the defense of your home and your loved ones and that sort of thing. One of the last main questions in this section is, so you've got everything and the worst situation happens in humankind. You look at your, your license card and you realize my license was supposed to be renewed two and a half months ago. <laughs> now I have to throw my firearm away. <laughs> what is the process of, of obviously renewing the firearm? I think I, I can speak. It's very simple. You, you email these guys, even if you're not in Cape Town, you can't come through. I renewed my license and I got my new license without actually ever meeting Mark in person. So it's very simple, right? Um, they will tell you exactly what to do. They send you the email. You go to the police station. Renewing your license under ordinary circumstances, gunlicense.co.za, the only complication is you have to drive to the police station. There's, not, there, you, you, there's no thought required on your end. But let's say I do phone you and I say, Mark, I forgot to renew my, my, my section, section 13. What, what happens now? Awesome. So once again, a very, very good question, which I think um, has affected a huge number of South Africans. Um, you know, there was, there was actually provision in the Farms Control Act where you could renew an expired license, but um, the system was actually, I'm not going to get too much into that, uh, but the system was sabotaged, the, the physical button 
that says re like renew expired license was disabled. We, we don't know how that happened. Not going to speculate too much on that uh, in this video. But um, but yeah, um, I think they were they were at a stage. I think four hundred thousand um, uh, expired licenses, and you know these people were overnight. They were they were they were they were basically turned into a quote unquote criminals. Um, but there was an amendment to this legislation. Luckily, so common sense prevailed. So let's say that you are sitting with a licensed firearm. The license has lapsed. Currently, as of the filming of this, uh, this uh, video, um, you are able to apply for a new license for that firearm. So it's not actually a renewal, you're actually applying for a new license for that firearm. So you basically sign as the current owner and as the new owner. Okay. Um, the process is exactly the same as if you were to buy a new firearm from a gun shop or whatever. Um, you know, or, or inherit a firearm or yeah. whatever it might be. The, the good news is you can actually um, stay in possession of your firearm. So your firearm stays at home in your safe until your new license is issued, uh, which is obviously magic because uh, this whole amnesty thing yeah. that, that, that just passed, we have to go and hand in your weapons. It, it, it makes absolutely no sense, absolutely no sense for you to um, you know, have to hand in your weapon. Because um, you don't need it any less. No, you know? it's, uh, <laughs> it's ridiculous. So, um, yeah, just to, just to make it nice and, 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 and coherent, because I, I tend to ramble. So no, it's you'll, fine. You'll it's find fine. that out about me. But uh, <laughs> um, the process is, yeah, very simple. Let's assume that you, that you use us. Um, we consult with you. You tell us, listen, I've got this uh, firearm. I've, I've forgot to license it, whatever it might be. Forgot to renew it. Um, we will send you a mandate form um, with the basic details that we need to compile your police application as well as your motivation because you are applying afresh. So you need to show the police that you still have all of these various reasons for the gun. Um, we will then send your application to you or you come fetch it at the, at, the, at the shop. You'll then take your weapon and your license pack into the police so that they can just check, yes, this is in fact the, the correct weapon. Yeah. Once again, some DFOs require it, some DFOs don't require it. So dealing with DFOs can sometimes be like herding cats. Uh, we've, uh, we've, we've luckily got some nice ones in Somerset West that actually you know, know what they're doing, um, which, is, which is very cool. But um, the application gets processed as per usual. You get your little SMS and, um, hey Presto, you are now once again uh, legal eagle. Legal. So exactly. my question is, if let's say we've got... Um, a renewal that e that has been done within the time frame, so you're not late. Mm. Um, I know with me, I was able to still carry my firearm even though my license was expired because I had the renewal forms. Yeah. Now, with a with a, an, an expired license, if you do that process, I'm assuming you get some other kind of forms. Mm. As long as you have those forms with you, are you still allowed to carry your firearm? No. Unfortunately not. It's a bit of a okay. gray area. Um, the legal opinion at the moment um, is that you keep that specific firearm at home in your safe, um, you know, so don't drive around with it. Uh, unfortunately, with an expired license, you will not be able to buy ammunition mm. unless, like in your case, you've got a, a renewal slip of, it's basically a proof of payment that, yeah. you, that you renewed on time. So let's say you apply 30 day, I mean, uh, three months or so 90 days before your, um, before your license lapses, You've, you're one of the unlucky ones that wait six months for the, for the, for the renewal to go through. So yeah. your license has been expired for three months. You can still carry your gun. You can still use it, shoot it, buy ammunition, not a problem. If you have applied after your expiry, unfortunately, now you have to leave your gun in the yeah. safe. Um, okay. Yeah. If you are faced with a home invasion type of situation, obviously the law states that you may use anything or any means at your disposal to defend yourself or... Uh, the life of another yeah. if an unlawful attack has begun or is imminent. So, Are there any legalities that we should be concerned about, about legally purchased ammunition in terms of hollow point, full metal jacket, whatever the case may be? If you purchased your, your ammunition from a gun store such as this that is legal, they ask you for your license and they fill it in that book, should you have any concerns about the ammo that you're carrying? So this is a can of worms. Uh, there's a lot of misinformation flying, flying out uh, you know, hollow points are illegal. You're only allowed to carry 15 rounds. And if you, know, if you have a magazine that carries more than 15, oh, that's bad. And uh, Absolutely not, guys. You're allowed to, um, as a general rule of thumb, uh, any ammunition that you purchase from a gun shop um, is legal. So that includes hollow points. That includes these RIP rounds. It includes uh, slugs of any, of any nature. Um, it's a pretty good rule of thumb to follow. Um, in fact, we, we actually recommend that you carry hollow points. 
Yeah. It's, it's basically impossible to buy an illegal round from a proper gun store. You can't do it. Okay. And then another situation that a lot of people are troubled with, you're at the traffic stop and you open up your wallet and the policeman looking into your vehicle sees a firearm license. Does he have any authority to ask to inspect, see or ask you to remove that firearm if that license, if that firearm was properly concealed, i.e. had you not seen that license, he would never know you're carrying a firearm? So this has to do a lot with if you saw, you saw your 200 rands. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke. Um, no, so Ryan, basically um, you are not under any obligation to um, tell a police official that you have a firearm on you unless you are asked specifically, do you have any weapons in the vehicle? Do you have a firearm on you? In which case you are legally obligated to say, yes, I do have a firearm on me, but only if asked. So let's say you go through a traffic stop, nobody asks you about any guns, away you go. If he does see a firearm license or he asks, listen, do you have a firearm in the car? Very, very simply, you say, yes, I do. I've got a Glock 19 or whatever it might be. I have a pistol, I carry an appendix. Would you like to see my license? I, I, I've, been, I've been pulled over numerous times. I've been, I've been uh, uh, a gun pointed by the police. Uh, it, it, it's a long story. There was a shooting incident and um, the police obviously don't know who's who. Yeah. Guys, comply. Comply with the police. This whole thing of, you know, you, you, know, you tell them, no, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to show you this. Where's your competency? Guys, just be lacquer. If you lacquer, the police are going to be lacquer 99% of the time. Um, just be cordial. Say, yes, I have a pistol. I carry an appendix. Would you like to see my license? And uh, they'll take it from there. Um, if they say, yes, uh, uh, we'd like to see the license, show them the license. Very, very simple. Yeah. Um, and if they'd like to see the firearm, um, my recommendation at that point in time is you do it in a very responsible way. You say, listen, it is one up at the moment. Um, if it's absolutely necessary, not a problem, but do you mind if we just go to a safe uh, area quickly where I can make it safe? Make it safe, show them, uh, you're, you're on your way. Yeah, I think, I think whilst, whilst there are many police order stories, we also have to take into account that you might be rolling through a stop where they are looking for or investigating a white vehicle with a white male who just murdered someone. And yeah. so you, I'm not racially profiling you, match sure, the description. Sure, sure. <laughs> and so they are going to ask you those questions and try to be as, as, as safe for themselves. Because remember, they are also human beings. They can't take any risks. They also want to get home to their family. So if they are touchy or whatever the case may be, try to be as calm, as chilled as possible. Mm. And generally, 90% of the time, you're going, to, you're going to get out of that okay. So yeah. guys, that is the first segment. Um, next week, we're going to come back and we're going to be talking about the post-engagement strategies to set you up for, for the highest level of, of success. So, Mark, thank you for this week, but they'll be seeing a lot more of you again next week. I'm going to switch back to my studio, and then we're going to give away some gear, and then we're going to end off. So, guys, if you want to pull the trigger, so to speak, on your first, second, third, fourth, fifth firearm, or you want to pull the trigger on a rifle, shotgun, whatever case may be, please contact the guys at Gunless at Zero today. They are virtually 100% guarantee that you're going to be able to na uh, navigate the legalities around purchasing a firearm so that you can set yourself up for success massively. Grateful to Mark for taking the time. That's the first part. Next week on the channel, we're doing the second part, which is where we focus entirely on what you, can, what you should do after a lawful self-defense situation so you can manage the legalities and set yourself up for success in that regard let's give away some gear and we'll end off okay guys so those of you who follow the channel know the story by now this is my list of active patrons i'm going to copy these names into a, a random name organizer but mr ruan Berta, i'm going to give you one of those canic gift bags what a lot of people don't realize is that this order is actually the order of people that have been my patrons from the longest so we started off with tyro not last year and I'm going to work my way up this list randomly giving away gifts to all these people until I've made sure I've given away at least one gift to every patron. So, Ruan, I'll hook you up with one of those Canic gift bags just for me to say thank you to you for being a patron and sticking with me for so long. I really appreciate your support. So, this is going to randomize the order of those 151 names. So we randomize it. There are 151 items, so we are good to go. I'm going to go back to Excel. I'm going to take these numbers which correspond to each person's name. I'm going to copy that into our 
wheel of names paste that there just make sure we have our 151 and we do 151 entries i'm going to shuffle that and this first spin is going to be for the nightcore sling bag and mre So number 120, so we'll remove 120 from the list and 120 is going to be Sheldon Locke. So Sheldon, you have won one of those Nightcore NUP30 packs as well as a um, MRE Let's Switch back. The second spin is going to be for the Canic uh, gift bag. number 102 so 102 is going to be bradley wood so well done to you Sh uh, sheldon and well done to you bradley i'm going to hook you guys up with those prizes i'll make content with you on patreon and then hook you up let's switch the view and we can endure so well done to those patrons i will make contact with you on patreon and then get that awesome gear shipped off to you i kitted this bag out as a as a go bag so you can check it out, the video's popping up in your screen, or it has popped up in your screen, and it will pop up at the end of this video as well. You can see what I've done on with, with that um, night course sling bag, it's really, really cool. Guys, that is it. I will see you next week for part two. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was informative, and I hope it's inspired you to get your first firearm or get your second firearm as a backup, that sort of thing. So you can maintain your level of preparedness no matter what. That's it, guys. I'll see you next week. Have a good week. Be safe. Try not. Cheers. God bless.